Good morning, friends, colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen. Before I start my presentation, I would really like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to deliver this keynote. Professor Michaelis Arenas in particular. Also, I would like to thank my three co-authors for their significant contribution to this lecture. They are Professor Zhou Chao, Dr. Zhang Xuai, and Mr. Zhang Qi. Here are the contents of my presentation. Firstly, I would like to give you a very brief instruction of my university, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology, with the objective to promote collaboration between yourselves and my university. Then I'll move on to give you a research background. Then I move on to introduce a unified and state-dependent framework for unsettled soils. Then I shall move on to introduce our state-dependent model for simulating psychic thermal hydromechanical behavior of soil. Then I shall describe the geotechnical applications using the psychic THM model, including energy pile under psychic heating and cooling, a 15 meter deep excavation in Tianjin. Finally, I shall move on to conclusions. I'm from Hong Kong, which is located at the southern coast of China here. And the distance between Greece and Hong Kong is about 7,000 kilometers. It's not that far. This is a satellite image of Hong Kong, which consists of a number of parts Hong Kong Island, Kowloon Peninsula New Territory, and the Lantau Island. If you come to Hong Kong, you land at the airport here. If you travel by car to the east from the airport, you reach our campus in about uh, 45 minutes. This is the beautiful view of our Victoria Harbor. Uh, as you probably know that Hong Kong is one of the major financial center in the world. Here are a couple of pictures showing uh, our campus from the northeast and also from southwest. And our university was established in 1991. We have four major schools. Currently, we have 12,000 undergraduate students and about 5,500 postgraduate students. And in our geotechnic group, we have 60 PhD students and about 30 uh, MPhil students. Although we are young, we are uh, well recognized, I believe. and we have been ranked by Times Higher Education and also QS. Uh, among the young universities, we ran number two, three and two respectively. Let me share with a piece of good news. We opened our new campus in Guangzhou. The size of the campus is about twice of our campus in Hong Kong. The distance between the two campuses is only uh, about 13 minutes apart by high speed rail. And English is a official media of instruction. We are actively recruiting uh, 400 academics and 4,000 research students right now. We also offer exchange uh, scholarships. And also we like to provide scholarships for full-time research students. And also we like to establish new PhD programs with major universities in the world. New PhD meaning two years in uh, our campus and two years in our partner university. So if anyone uh, interested in what I just said, uh, please contact me through this email, uh, charles.ng at usd.hk. Now let me move the research background for the lecture today. Uh, this figure shows some typical and soil engineering problems such as uh, subgrade soil underneath embedments and also soil slopes. The soil underneath an embedment is subject to heating and cooling cycles, as well as dry and wetting cycles throughout the years. Also, the embedment slopes may suffer from instability problem due to precipitation. Currently, most of exceeding models for unsettled soil mainly focus on monotonic behavior only. A 
stay dependent cyclic thermal hydromechanical i.e. THM model is therefore uh, needed. Before I report our state dependent cyclic thermal hydromechanical model, and I would like to introduce a simple theoretical framework to help us to improve our fundamental understanding of unsaturated soil behavior. Due to the limit of time, I cannot afford to give a detailed account of this theoretical framework. I can only briefly introduce this framework during my presentation here. For those of you interested in this theoretical framework, please refer to our paper published in year 2020 in Eta Geotechnica. In this unified and simple framework, net stress and matrix structure are used for simplicity. Net, net stress is defined as the difference between total stress and pore air pressure. Matrix suction is calculated as the difference between pore air pressure and pore water pressure. By adopting net stress and matrix suction, the consistent formulation for unsaturated soil can be expressed in a generalized incremental form as shown in the figure here. Or IJ terms, i.e. I equal to 1, 2, 3, J equal to 1, 2, 3, are state-dependent variables for a given soil. According to the strain incremental stress equation here, shown in this figure, the variables I11, I21, and I31 in the compliance matrix describe the behavior of unsaturated soil during compression. Similarly, I12, I22, and I32 describe the hydromechanical behavior during shearing process. While I13, I23, and I33 can capture the behavior of soil subject to drying and wetting. All nice state dependent variables can be calibrated through suction and stress control tests on unsaturated soils. And those, those variables can also be determined using continued formulation for the compression, shearing, and water retention behavior of unsaturated soil will be discussed later. Please note that this equation shown here is also valid when the soil is saturated, as the saturated soil is a very special case of unsaturated soil when the degree of saturation is equal to 100%. At this special con saturated condition, the net stress can be replaced by Tasaki's effective stress, whereas the values of I I13, I23, I31, and I32 and I33 become will become zero. In considering modeling of unsaturated soil, one of the key issues is the choice of proper constituent variables. Many constituent variables have been proposed in literature to model mechanical behavior of unsaturated soil. According to Professor Antonin James and his co-author, they believe that different constituent stresses stands on an equal footing, and the matter of adopting one or the other must be decided using the criteria of convenience. And we share their views. So in this unified and state-dependent theoretical framework of the current study, net stress and major suction are used for simplicity. Some unsaturated soil model in the literature are based on other constitutive stress state variables rather than the net stress and suction. These models can also be converted to the unified framework by matrix transformation. For example, the model proposed by Wheeler et al. in 2003, who used the Bishop's stress and modified suction. Another example is the model by Professor Khalili and his co-author. It can be shown here, those two examples can be converted to the unified uh, framework by matrix transformation. Let me introduce and explain the physical meaning of each variables, I, I, J, and how it's measured in the experiments. The variable I11 here 
in the compliant matrix is the ratio of incremental volumetric strain to incremental mean net strains when the vectorial stress Q and suction S are constant. The value of these variables corresponding to soil volumetric compressibility, which can be measured through compression tests at constant Q and S conditions. For example, in and Young carry a series of suction controlled isotropic compression tests on a compacted soil. Four suction levels were considered, including 0, 50, 100, and 200 kPa of suction. On the measured relationship between volumetric strain and net stress, the value of I11 can be determined from this equation here. Now let me move on to introduce I12 here. I12 is a ratio of incremental volumetric strain to incremental derivative stress. And volumetric strain induced by dilation and contraction during shear process can be measured at constant P and constant Q tests. Now you can be seen from this equation. Okay, I12 is governed by a term called DQ. Okay, DQ is a stress impedance dilatancy expressed by this equation here. And the right hand figure shows the effects of stress ratio on dilatancy, DQ. By substitute DQ into the first equation, I12, one can get the expression here at the bottom. Now you can see I12 can be determined through this equation. Once I22 is obtained, details how to obtain I22 will be discussed later. Now let's move on to I13. I13 in the compliance matrix is the ratio of incremental volumetric strain to incremental suction. And this variable can describe shrinkage and swelling of an unsettled soil subject to wetting and drying. Based on the tests shown on the right hand side, the value of I can be determined. Now let's move on to I21. And I21 is the ratio of incremental derivative strain to incremental mean net stress when Q and S are constant where the incremental derivative strain can be calculated using the right-hand equation shown here. The dilatancy number DP during constant P tests of an unsafe soil has been studied through compression tests on the experimental results, and DP can be an obtained. Once the DP is measured, then I21 can be calculated based on this equation shown here. Let's move on to I22. I22 is the ratio of incremental derivative strain to incremental derivative stress when P and S are constants. This variable is a function of tangent and shear modulus G. It is well recognized that shear modulus G depends on strain level as shown in this uh, figure here. A very small strain below 0.001% the shear modulus is essentially a constant and it is typically donated as G0. The value is widely used for different purposes, such as the calculation of ground movements under dynamic loads. At small strain, at small strain ranges between 0.001% to 0.001%, the shear modulus reduces significantly with an increase in strength. By, you, by using the equipment shown in this picture here, with internal measurements, with internal measurement devices, such as blender elements and also whole effect transducers, the change of shear modulus G with strength can be measured. The shear modulus uh, vary with uh, soil suction can also be determined. Uh, shown here on the right hand side uh, uh, diagram here. Therefore, by using the average, so on the left hand side here, the value of I22 can be determined.
Now let's move on to I23. I23 is the ratio of incremental iterator strain to incremental suction when Q and P are constants. The value of I23 can be obtained by carrying out wetting and drying tests to obtain DS or dilating number through some typical test shown on the right hand side here. Once the DS is obtained, then the I23 can be calculated by the equation shown at the bottom here. Now let's discuss I31, I23, and I33 uh, all together. Various experimental techniques have been developed for determining the soil water retention curve in soil science and also agricultural related disciplines, such as using heavy pressure cells, the pressure membrane extractor, and also osmotic desiccator. However, these apparatuses do not take into account of the deformation and stress state of soil during the test. However, in geotechnical engineering, it is well known that soil behavior is strongly depends on soil state. Since about 20 years ago, the influence of soil density and deformation on soil water retention curve has been recognized and widely investigated. For example, Ng and Pan developed a novel stress controllable pressure plate apparatus, which is now they commercialized as shown on the right hand side here, to study the influence of stress. For, for example, shown here 0, 40, and 80 on the water retention curves. It is evident that soil water retention characteristics can be strongly influenced by the stress level. Further to consider the effects of stress on pore distribution, Zhou and Ng determined the relationship between the proportion of macro pores and their stress, shown in this diagram here. Hence, the influence of stress on pore distribution can be considered. By considering the stress effect on water retention capability, a constitutive relation can overcome the limitations of previous statistics based on soil and agricultural sciences. By using the expression of a Wenkenation equation shown here, we develop a novel stress dependent water retention equation to take the account of two different aspects of stress influence on soil water retention curve. One, stress induced change in average Y ratio. Two, stress effects on pore size distribution. Based on the experimental evidence that I just showed you, the variable I31 expressed by this equation can be determined. In fact, the, this variable is the ratio of incremental degree of saturation to incremental uh, mean net stress when Q and S are constants. And it is clear that this variable is closely related to uh, stress dependent soil water retention curve. The second variable I32 is the ratio of incremental degree of saturation to incremental degree stress when T e and S are constants. The last stress-dependent variables, that's I would like to say I33, is the ratio of incremental degree of saturation to incremental suction when P and Q are constants. This variable is related to desorption and absorption rates of an unsaturated soil. This figure provides you a summary of all the nine stress-dependent variables in this compliance matrix of our simple theoretical framework. This simple theoretical framework, I believe, is very important as it helps us to improve our fundamental understanding of unsaturated soil behavior. Also, all these nine stress-dependent variables has clear physical meanings. That means 
we can design our experiments to determine their values for calibrating our new models in future. And also, because they have a clear physical meaning, they can assist us to develop new consumer models, as the one I'm going to introduce in my next slide. Based on the theoretical framework that I just described, we have developed our novel state-dependent psychic thermal hydromechanical IETHM model, which is published in the proceedings of this conference. In addition to the information published in our paper, and I would like to provide you more details of our model in the coming few slides to assist you to understand our model better. In this model, three variables are used to define the stress state of a soil element, namely mean bishop's stress shown here, irritator stress, and also major suction. Two of the metric variables, namely specific volume and also degree of saturation are chosen to define the relative proportions of solids, water, and air within an unsaturated soil element. Moreover, the temperature is used to model thermal effects on soil behavior. Apart from the six variables shown above, two state variables, eta and psi, are adopted, shown here. The state parameter eta, which was introduced by Telepoli et al. in 2003, and this state parameter is used to describe its stabilization effects on soil skeleton arising from the water meniscus between soil particles. The second state parameter, psi here, was introduced by Bean and Jeffers in 1985, and the state pro this state parameter is used to describe how far the soil state is away from the critical state in terms of y ratio. Our model considers coupling effects between thermal IET, hydraulic H, and mechanical behavior M of soil. Soil mechanical behavior is affected by temperature, full thermal elasticity, and also thermal plasticity. Regarding the hydromechanical coupling, we consider water retention behavior is a function of water ratio, wind stress, irritator stress, and temperature. While the mechanical behavior soil is mainly governed by major suction and degree of saturation. In light of the theoretical framework that I described, particularly the two stress state variable, I12 and I22 in the compliance matrix shown to you early on, we have developed our model using the bounding surface partition theory proposed by the fellas in 1986. This figure shows an PQ ether space with an illustration of bounding surfaces. The bounding surface FB, shown here, is defined to describe elastoplastic behavior during mechanical loading, i.e. compression and shearing, and also wetting and drying process. The intersection curve or bounding surface and the P ether plane is well known and recognized as the loading collapse curve. In this figure here, it shows a pre-consolidation pressure increases with an increased suction, as described as suction hardening phenomenon. When temperature increases, the red bounding surface will shrink to the blue ones to represent the decrease of pre-consolidation pressures with an increased temperature, as mimicking thermal softening behavior. This two behavior has been supported by many experimental results published in the literature. This LG curve 
and the different temperature is associated with normal compression lines of soil. This equation shown here is to describe the evolution of pre-consolidation pressure when changing temperature and suction. More details will be discussed later. In light with the previous uh, theoretical framework described, particularly two stress state variables, I31 and I33, in a compliance matrix, we introduced the bounding surface FH for modeling water retention behavior in the S and SR plane in our model. In this study, the change of SR with S is modeled as an elastoplastic process shown here. A main joint curve and a main wetting curves are used to model hydraulic hysteresis. As you can see here, any state in the SR S plane is bounded by the main drying and wetting curve are described as a scanning curve shown in the figure. They can be determined using the bounding surface plasticity theory with corresponding matting rules. As just mentioned earlier on, the complete consolidation pressure of soil can be affected by temperature and suction. Many, many previous researchers have carried out temperature controlled isotropic compression tests to study thermal effects on the normal compression line of saturated soil. The typical results are qualitatively illustrated in this figure here. When the temperature increases, the normal compression line shown here actually shifts downwards as shown in this line here. These two lines in the V log P plane are essentially parallel. By considering normal compression lines at different temperatures, the relationship between P0 and also temperature can be derived as shown in this equation here. For an unsaturated soil, the normal compression line here actually shifts to a higher Y ratio as the soil desaturates. The typical experimental results are qualitatively shown in this figure here. To link the normal compression line at saturated and unsaturated states, the semi empirical equation proposed by Galapoli et al. in 2003 is considered and used in our model. The normal compression line at any given conditions of meter and temperature is a straight line in the V log P plane. Eta is the step parameter closely related to suction and degree saturation of soil. By considering normal compression lines under different suction, the relationship between P0 and the state parameter eta can be derived as shown in, in this equation here. Again, in light of the theoretical framework, particularly this distress state wave I22 in the compliance matrix, as I showed you previously, suction and temperature dependent critical state line is introduced in our model. This figure shows the definition of the state parameter psi, which was firstly proposed by Beam and Jeffries in 1985. It is defined as the difference between the current Y ratio E and the critical state Y ratio EC corresponding to the current effective stress in the E log P plane. Based on the experimental evidence, we define the critical state line is a function of suction and also temperature, given by this equation here, regarding the state-dependent dilatancy. The dilation stress ratio MD is used for describing the effects of state parameter on flow rule. When the stress ratio 
is lower than the dilation stress ratio, the soil shows contractive response, whereas it shows dilative response when the stress ratio is higher than the dilation stress ratio. To simulate cyclic behavior of soil using thermal plasticity, a memory surface called FM is introduced in our model. It is assumed that this memory surface has the same shape as the bounding surface. Radio, in this model, radio mapping rules is used as shown in this figure here. When, when the soil state is inside the bounding surface, it is used to, to project the actual stress state as the loading surface on the bounding surface. Hence, it defines a new image stress state. Apart from the actual stress state, the image stress state may affect many aspects of soil behavior, including dilation and also loading indices. As loading index for compression and shearing shown here, the plastic modulus KP considers the effects of state parameters psi. It also depends on stress history, which is reflected by the mapping rule among the three surfaces. In order to verify our constructive model, we have developed a series of different novel apparatus for testing unsaturated soils. If you are interested, please go to visit our papers published in Canadian Geotechnic Journal, Geotechnic, Geotechnical Testing Journal, and Geotechnic Letters. Due to the time constraint, here I just introduce you two selected apparatuses. The first one is our own developed suction control and temperature controlled double cell apparatus. This figure shows a schematic diagram of this apparatus. In this setup, both suction and temperature can be controlled independently. And in this setup, the acid translation technique is used to control matrix suction. The total volume change of a specimen is measured by our double wall system using a differential pressure transducer shown in this picture here. The total volume change of a specimen is measured by monitoring the change in differential pressure between the water level inside the inner cell and that in the reference tube show here. Here is a photograph showing the entire setup of our temperature and suction controlled double cell triazo system. This is the heating and this is the heating and cooling water bath, mainly consists of a thermostat and a heating and cooling unit and an inbuilt pump and a thermocouple together with a digital controller, which enable us to adjust the output of heating and cooling units according to our required current and target temperatures. The second apparatus I will have to introduce to test unsaturated soil at various suctions and temperature. Is this one is the one shown here. We have developed this apparatus to allow us to control suction and temperature independently. Basic suction can be controlled independently by controlling the air pressure and water pressure respectively. To apply thermal loading, a loading system is used. The heating system consists of a thermostat, a heater, and a, and a thermal couple, as shown in this figure. Both of them are connected to a thermostat forming a closed loop control and feedback system. In addition to the conventional external measurement of SO displacement using an LVDT, the Hall effect transducers are used to measure local soil deformation at the mid height of each specimen. Moreover, 
three sets of blender elements can be installed in the triso system here to determine the shear wave velocities traveling at three different planes, hence to measure the small strength stiffness of the soil. Now let's move on to experimental verification of our model predictions. The figure on the left here shows a measure response of a reconstituted sheeted clay subject to heating and cooling cycles at zero suction. It can be seen that volumetric strains about 0.45% was induced by the first cycle of heating. With an increasing number of heating and cooling cycles, irreversible strains accumulated, but in a reducing rate. After five thermal cycles, the accumulated strain was about 0.85%. The computer results are shown on the right for comparison. It is evident that the computer results are consistent with the measurements shown on the left, such as our model is capable to capture psychic thermal behavior of soil. This figure compares the measures and computed volumetric strain during heating and cooling cycles at two suction conditions, 0 and 100 kPa. During heating, the thermal, the thermally induced volumetric contraction at 100 kPa suction, shown by the open triangles here, is smaller than the one at zero suction, shown by the solid triangles. This is due to suction hardening effect. The plastic modulus increases as a difference be between the soil state history reflected by the bounding surface and the current soil state reflected by the loading surfaces increase resulted in suction hardening. Based on the comparison here, I hope you all agree that our model can capture psychic thermal behavior at both saturated and unsaturated states well. These figures compare the measures and computer relations of derivative stress and shear strain of a silty soil at zero suction but at but under different temperature 20 degrees C, 40 degrees C and 60 degrees C. The upper diagrams are the measured values and the lower diagrams are the predicted numbers. At each temperature, the measured and computed values are very consistent. It is clearly revealed that the plastic strain induced by cyclic load by cyclic loads increases with an increased temperature. The observed, the observed thermal effects on plastic strain accumulation are captured well by our model using this equation. This three figures shows the measured accumulation of plastic strains at suction 0, 30, and 60 kPa under constant temperature 20 degrees C. Corresponding computer value are shown in red in the three bottom diagrams. It can be seen that the model can capture the accumulated plastic strain and suction hardening well by using this equation here. So now let's move on to geotechnical applications. Our model has been implemented in a commercial software to analyze various boundary value problems. The first one I would like to introduce in this lecture is energy piles subject to heating and cooling cycles. The model energy piles were tested in our geotechnical centrifuge center. If you are interested in our century model tests, please refer to the first two uh, 
paper published in the Journal of Geotechnical and Geo Environmental Engineering, ASE, and Renewable Energy. The correspondent numerical analysis are published in our very recent geotechnic paper, shown here. In order to understand the mechanism of floating energy piles subject to thermal cycles and to develop design guidelines, we have collaborated with different research teams to carry out field testing and monitoring, transcendent modeling, numerical modeling, including constitutive modeling. Now let me share with you what we have done about sentient modeling and numerical modeling of floating energy piles subject to thermal loads. This is our 400 G-ton geotechnical centrifuge installed in a campus in 2001, more than 20 years ago. It is a 8.4 meter diameter field centrifuge equipped with the world first bioso shaking table shown here and the most advanced and the biggest four axis robotic manipulator. In order to simulate energy piles subject to heating and cooling cycles, we have developed a normal heating and cooling system to facilitate in flight testing of energy piles. This novel system consists of four main components, namely a group of cooling units, heating units, a numerical pump, and insulated piping system. The entire assembly is mounted on one of the centrifuge arm. This system enables us to control temperature in the energy pile between 3 to 90 degrees Celsius. And if you are interested in this setting, more details are given in our paper published in Geotani Letters in 2014. Our novel model energy pile is shown in this picture here. Each energy pile is made of aluminum tube, a purposely designed inner tubing system is installed in each energy pile to facilitate exchange fluid to circulate from the top to the bottom of each pile. This type of arrangement is very similar to that of a direct double pipe system used in the field. So on the top left corner here. In the initial time, only one of the five two by two pile groups model tests carried out at 40G will be introduced and compared in this lecture. This is a cross section of a model container showing one energy pile graph and one elevated pile group EPG. Saturated chaotic clay was prepared with an OCR equal to 1.7 at the pile toll for testing. Very comprehensive instrumentation was installed in each test, including LVDTs, operator transducers, thermal couples, and string cages at close spacing, etc. This is a photograph showing the relative location of two pile groups and two pile rafts, and also one infrared pile group load testing system in the middle of the container. This is a typical three dimensional finite element model set up to better analyze our sensitive tests by using our psychic. THM contributing model. I would like to draw your attention of our EPG 3D tests. EPG stands for elevated pile group at three pile spacing, which consists of three energy piles, EP1, EP2, and EP3, and one long energy pile called NEP. The purpose of this test was to investigate long symmetrical thermal loading on energy pile group due to malfunction of an energy pile by accident. The measured performance of these four piles will be compared with the numerical prediction in this slide. This, the figure on the left compares the measured temperature history of EP1, EP2, and EP3 shown by the red triangles with the numerical prediction shown by red lines. It's clear that 
the measured result and the computer result are very consistent. The figure on the right compares the measured temperature history of the long energy pile, so by the black triangle, and the numerical predicted values are shown by the red lines. The measured soil temperature are shown by open circles with the predicted value shown by the red dotted lines. Again, it is clear that good agreements between the measured and the computer results have been obtained. This figure compares the thermally induced displacement of energy pile EP1. In the figure, the positive and negative values denote settlement and heat respectively. From this figure, the settlement visiting pattern is observed in both experiments. The consistent trend indicates the usable visiting pile head displays can be captured well by the, our final end model. However, the thermally induced soil creep behavior may be further considered in the consumer model in order to capture the higher measured pile head settlement in future. Now let me illustrate the importance of considering unsaturated small strain soil stiffness in the design of a deep excavation intention. If you are interested in this work, you may find our paper published in Computer and Geotechnics in year 2020. The deep excavation project was located in Tianjin, which is the largest coastal city in the northern part of China. The area of excavation for high-rise buildings covering approximately 180 meters by 268 meters on plan retains by 20 meter long contiguous pile. To facilitate effective and safe excavation, water table was lowered down from 3 meter below ground level up to 17.2 meter before the excavation. And after dewatering, construction stage 3 started to excavate from minus 2 level to minus 3.7, minus 10.45, and finally reach minus 15.2 meters. The construction stage is 6. The left hand side diagram shows the comparison of the measured and predicted wall deflection without considering suction effects on small strain soil stiffness. It can be seen that cantilever mode of wall deflection was measured and, and predicted after each stage of excavation. In the interest of time, let's focus on the final stage of excavation. The computer we saw in blue line here, blue dotted line, clearly over predicts the measured blue solid symbols here by at the top by up to 75%. On the contrary, the computer will only over predict by about 20% at the top at the end of excavation when this such an effect on small string stiffness are considered. This figure compares the computer value without considering small strain stiffness with the measured point here. This figure compares the computer result considering suction effects on small strain stiffness. You can see from these two figures, suction effects has to be considered in order to get good predictions. The figure on the right compares the basal teeth of the soil at the bottom of the excavation. You can see that the prediction using this suction dependent small strain stiffness is consistent with the measuring point here very well. Now let's move on to the conclusions. A unified state dependent theoretical framework in the form of kind smith stimulates state dependent hydromechanical behavior of unsettled soil. The nine state dependent variables, which have clear physical meanings, were derived. Based on the theoretical framework, a novel state dependent psychic thermal mechanical model was developed. 
by using the novel theoretical model, two geotechnical engineering applications were analyzed, including the psychic firmly loaded floating energy pile foundation and a deep excavation in unsaturated ground. I hope you will agree with me that consistent results are obtained between the computer values and measured data. Thank you very much for your attention.